Welcome everybody to Jacksonville, Florida and the 2018 Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, a part of Capital One Bowl Mania. For the first time in their program's histories, North Carolina State and Texas A&M square off on the football field here from TIAA Bank Field. Jimbo Fisher leading the Texas A&M Aggies out onto the field in his first season as the head coach of A&M. With that, we welcome you into the broadcast booth. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick. We told you about Jimbo Fisher in his first year, a chance at nine wins. Dave Doran's team, a chance at ten wins. And two real studs that we're going to see. The SEC rushing leader and the ACC passing yeah, leader. Yeah, Trevion Williams, he's the heart and soul of that team. And then on the other side, you've got Ryan Finley. Yep. And he is the heart and soul of NC State. His last game, a six-year senior. He'll be in the NFL next year. He's going to have a chance to play his final game for NC State tonight. We'll find out, perhaps tonight or maybe in the coming weeks if it is Travion Williams final game for Texas A&M. <laughs> NC State won the toss and deferred so the Aggies will have the ball first. Kyle Bambard kicks away and off we go in the 2018 Gator Bowl. Jayshon Corbin on the return. And he'll sprint his way out to the 29 yard line. Some memorable moments this season for Texas A&M including Kellen Mond's six TD performance in that seven overtime win about a month ago over LSU. You think he's really improved from freshman to sophomore Oh year. man this is not the same quarterback we saw last season. Last season he didn't have a lot of confidence. His accuracy was all over the place. And this year, man, he is fantastic. He's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC for the next couple of years. Game time, please reset the clock to 1445. 1445. Thank you. Pac-12 officiating crew, Mike Duddy is our lead official. Clock didn't run for some reason after the opening second. Now we're set to go. Bond to the outside, caught by Kendrick Rogers, who was so crucial to that LSU game. A victory for AM. He'll pick up eight yards. Well, Mond, you see perfect accuracy on that out pass. He's got a bevy of receivers that he can use in this ball game. All long, tall, big receivers. He has no problem trusting them and putting the ball up for them. It's a keep for Kellen Mond, and he's got the first down and more. Kellen Mond explodes to the open field. Touchdown, Aggies. What a start. The longest run of Kellen Mond's season for a touchdown. Well, just a zone the read the that you've seen a thousand a times. After the play, sideline interference offense against the Texas A&M team. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Sideline interference against Jimbo Fisher's sideline. That will be a penalty that will be assessed on the kickoff, as you heard, but... What an explosive start for Kellen Mond and the Aggies. Well, if you're NC State, you get all revved up to handle Williams, the heart and soul of that attack. And Thank you so much. You missed some fireworks while you were talking to a soaking wet Mike Gundy, Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, and Quint Kesnick with you. We haven't even played a half a minute yet. We've only seen a couple of plays from scrimmage. The last one was this, a yeah. Kellen Mond 62-yard touchdown run. Yeah, just a simple zone read play, nothing fancy, except that NC State all hyped up to deal with Williams. 
Both linebackers went after him. Mon held on to the ball and just outran everyone on NC State's defense. And that's one thing to keep in mind, Adam. This whole game is the significant amount of speed differential there is. This is a fast Texas A&M team. And you saw some of it with that replay of that opening touchdown from the quarterback spot. Yep. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Cashnick, a happy new year to you. The final game of the 2018 calendar year. We've got Texas A&M in its first year under Jimbo Fisher with a chance to get to nine wins. Dave Dorn with a chance to get to ten wins for just the second time in NC State history. Two studs tonight, Travion Williams of Texas A&M and Ryan Finley for North Carolina State. Well, Williams is the heart and soul of the Texas A&M offense. I mean, he's their vocal leader. He's the guy who runs it. He catches it. He gets everybody together. But you saw Mon have that impact on the first play. But that guy, Finley, man, what a story he is. He decided not to leave early for the NFL, came back this season, decided to play in this bowl game because he wanted to finish it with the senior class. There was a 15-yard sideline interference penalty on the touchdown. That's why AM kicks off from the 20. And Maurice Trowell will take it to the 25-yard line, but had to deal with a whole lot of traffic to get there. So Ryan Finley making his 39th and final career start for North Carolina State. We asked Dave Doran what makes him so special. I think just his daily uh, approach to how he does what he does. Uh, his preparation, his routine, timer, um, the way the he clock. cares about people, the way he treats people. I mean, all the X's and O's, all the football, the, the God-given ability that he has is one thing, but the way he goes about his daily life is what makes him special. The leading passer in the ACC, the leading completion percentage among ACC quarterbacks, 39th and final start in his collegiate career. And he slings it out to C.J. Riley, who immediately gets brought down in space by Leon O'Neal Jr. There's a lot on Finley tonight because I don't believe that NC State's going to be able to run the ball very well against this Texas A&M defense that has been stringent all season, only 92 yards allowed per game all season. He is that six-year senior, though, who really understands defense. He's got a quick release. He's got a chance to do some really good things. Finley on the cross. Good job to hold on to it by Jacoby Myers. Riley and Myers each have a catch already, Quint, and that's big because the leading receiver in the ACC is not playing tonight. Yeah, that is Kelvin Harmon. 81 catches on the season with seven touchdowns. How good is he? Well, he represents about 100 yards of offensive production. You saw Jacoby Myers and what he can do as a guy who can move the chains. Emeka Amezzi is more of an intermediate threat. And the new face is C.J. Riley, number 19. He looks the part, six foot four with blazing vertical speed. Can he challenge this Aggie defense downfield? Finley will try on third down into traffic, seeking Emezzi. And the cornerback at six foot four, Miles Jones, the sophomore, broke it up. Yeah, he did a really nice job, got his left hand in there. And nice or interesting to see, no pressure from Texas A&M. They didn't go after Finley. Instead, they dropped eight into pass coverage and actually dropped two of their defensive linemen back, trying to make sure they give some different looks to Finley. A.J. Cole punts away for the Wolfpack. Rashad Paul with a fair catch from the 23-yard line. First meeting all time between North Carolina State and Texas A&M takes place in Jacksonville. And welcome back to the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl from Jacksonville, Florida, all part of Capital One Bowl Mania. The final game of the 2018 calendar year, and A&M off to a 7-0 start early, and Kellen Mond's 62-yard touchdown run is what got the Aggies in front. Their second series starts from the 23. Mond hit as he throws, incomplete. Second year that he's had an opportunity to start, and Jimbo Fisher, a respected counselor of quarterbacks, spoke highly of Mond. You know, Kellen's a grinder. He comes from a military background. He wants to know the whys of the game. He wants to be very detail-oriented and works at the game exclusively and puts as many hours in as he needs. 
Well, he is so much better than last year, more confident. He looks better, more fundamentally sound, better release. Watch him hold the ball higher when he is passing, not as low as it used to be. But better mechanically this season, and on the move, he's able to find Courtney Davis, the redshirt sophomore, to set up a makeable third down. You know, just moving the ball up higher gave him a quicker release. When you hold that ball down low, you've got, you know, more time it takes to bring it up to release it. It's like what hitters do when their hands are too low. They're a little slow getting to the swing. Yep. Move his hands up, he's a little quicker on the release. Going up against a very strong rushing defense for NC State. They'll try to run it, and they will get the first down. And Jimbo Fisher opens up trying to establish Mon. He knows that there's going to be a lot of focus on Williams, so he's establishing Mon. Any, any moment here, any play, is going to start getting some of Williams because he is, he's dynamic. He, he's not the biggest guy. But he is tough. He can do everything from that position, whether it's pass blocking, catching, rushing the ball. He's the, he's the heart of that offense. Travion Williams, the leading rusher in the SEC, has not had a touch yet in the early go. Here's his first one of the night. And he turned what could have been a loss into at least a play back to the line of scrimmage before Jarius Moorhead stopped him. You know, to me, one of the fascinating things about Mond is that you got a guy who grew up in Texas where football is king, and he, he left his senior year to go to the IMG Academy in Florida. A lot of quarterbacks, a lot of yep. college football players have come out of that institution. Hard, hard to leave Texas rich football to go somewhere else to play, right? Got a chance to start last season. When Nick Starkle suffered an injury in the opener against UCLA, started eight games last year, has been the full-time starter all year this year. Here's Travion Williams, and there is the leading rusher in the SEC, showing what he can do. Rod, you think he has excellent balance, and that's what makes him very effective in his size. Well, he's not missing anything. He's got great balance. Remember the old romper room uh, show for kids, and they had those weebles, weebles wobble, but I mean, they the don't weebles, fall down. I, see, I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, well, you can hit him around, and he won't <laughs> fall down easily. He, he just kind of stays up. He pins, he ping pongs off of people. He just broke Cyrus Gray's 2010 all-purpose yard record. He's got over 1,800 this year. He's got a chance for the single-season rushing record tonight. Mon with a very dangerous pass behind Jamon Osmond and Chris Ingram had a gift nearly delivered right to his hands. Yeah, and you can still see every now and then the ball gets away from Mon. This one he's moving up, and so his mechanics are off. Watch it. That ball is released high and right where he doesn't want it to Ooh, go. Man. Oh, Ingram had a completely easy pick there. Well, Mon got away with one and he knows it. So does Jimbo Fisher. <laughs> On second down, throwing it up for the long-armed Kendrick Rogers, who makes the grab at the 48-yard line. You know, this group of receivers, uh, this is a good-looking, long, Absolutely. big group. You know, it reminds me of the crew that they have over at Clemson, you know? Uh, th these guys... You know, Q Rogers is 6'3", 6'4", and looks like a Robocop. Don't forget Sternberger, their excellent tight end, who has over 800 yards this year. Timeout, North Carolina State, the first of the half. This will be a full timeout. Wolfpack spend a timeout, third and five, coming up when you return. Beautiful night after we had a bunch of fog rolling in over the course of the weekend. Some rains over the course of the weekend, but a little humid but clear here tonight for this Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. The 74th edition of the sixth oldest bowl in college football. NC State very solid on defense on third down this year, trying to get off the field. 
Mond with plenty of time delivers on target for the first down to Jamon Osmond. Well, credit the offensive line there because he did have time and there was a blitz coming. And they picked it up and Mond was not just, look, there's the pressure, a good block up front cue. They picked it up, but that defense will come after you. Yeah, you're going to see a Wolfpack defense tonight that brings six or more on many occasions. I talked to Dave Huxtable about this. The vulnerability for NC State is in the secondary, their corners, and specifically the safety matchups. So they're either going to drop eight or rush six or more and try to speed up Mon's clock. They, they can't afford to have him sit back there uh, and dissect man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Offense number 81. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Jay Sternberger on the false start. You know, Q, this secondary has had its issues, particularly with, you know, deep balls down the field. Uh, you know, 20-yard passes, they were ranked 105th in the country. They gave up 48 of them. And they also had a tendency to pick up Pinson, uh, pass interference calls. I was going to say, we caught them earlier in this in the year, and their loss up in the Carrier Dome, their, their safeties covering slot receivers were, were, were just were just abused. Travion Williams back to the ground game. Gets hit by Darian Roseboro. Extended drive on the second A&M touch. The tenth play of the drive coming. NC State is without one of their key players on defense. Jermaine Pratt, outstanding linebacker, is not playing, but Mr. Moore has stepped in to try and pick up the slack there. Brock Miller is also in there. There is Pratt. That's a big dude they're right missing. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he, look, he looks like he's already an NFL player. Yep. Second in the ACC in total tackles this season. Mon on the move for Sternberger to tall. He's missed high a couple of times today already. Kellen Mond threw for a career-high 430 yards against Clemson, threw for a career-high six TDs in that seven-overtime win against LSU. Now facing a top-40 scoring defense in North Carolina State. Well, this is getting us to the situation that Q was talking about. you got to make a decision. You're going to bring pressure, you're going to drop eight. Typically, you might... You know, drop the eight here since it's third and 14, but hey, we'll see what they do. They're showing pressure. They're dropping. Yep, only three on the rush. Mond for Sternberger, too tall again. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Jimbo is probably going to talk to him a little bit. He's missed high three times, you know, and check the fundamentals, or is he just a little too hyped up? You know Jimbo Fisher's affinity for quarterbacks and how skilled he's been over the course of his coaching career at guiding several quarterbacks to high heights. He's done a nice job with Mon this year. Not a great drive for Kellen there. I like what he told us yesterday. You know, he said he likes he can coach him hard yeah. if you take a look at boy, the best punter in college football. Here he is coming back for his senior year he's already declared. Braden Mann. Yep, that'll do it. Perfect punt by the junior from Houston who's on the precipice of breaking a bunch of college football records as a punt. So this is the final game of 2018. The first games of 2019 take place tomorrow on New Year's Day. How about this triple header for you? LSU UCF in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, Washington Ohio State in the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, and then Texas and Georgia in the All State Sugar Bowl. I give you this platter with you, with, 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 which you can this, feast upon all day, Ron. Well, that's what January 1st is all about. It's supposed to be, right? You stay to be home, like you get yourself a whole bunch of food, and you watch football all day. Great memories of that. Matter of fact, I think I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Long field in front of Ryan Finley. Giving it to Reggie Gillespie, who gets undercut by Leon O'Neill Jr. North Carolina State, third in the ACC in scoring at 35 and a half per game, with Ryan Finley calling the shots this year. Plenty of time down the middle. What a grab by Kerry Angeline, the tight end. 
out across the 30 yard line. You have the little things like the, the look off to the right side by Finley making the safeties honor the outside and then coming back to the middle to find his tight end and Juline and a nice catchable ball for him. But it's the little things in quarterbacking like the look off. High IQ quarterback right Ryan Finley. Angeline again who has just seven catches in his career coming in. He's already got two grabs on back to back plays tonight. Yeah, Let's go back uh, to the previous pass to look at it from the blimp. You can see his head to the right side looking folks off and coming back over the linebackers in between the safeties. Beautifully done. Here's Gillespie. Good run, and he'll pick up the first down. We told you Ryan Finley's an NFL quarterback prospect. Dwayne Haskins has shot up the charts. He hasn't officially declared yet. But we know Will Greer is on his way to the NFL. It's a pretty good list, and Finley's on there for Todd McShay. Well, and keep in mind that this list will probably It'll change. change. Uh, obviously. With, with obviously all the workouts and the testing, the combine, yeah. Well, just to be on that top five for the time being says a lot about Finley. The veteran quarterback slings it away with good pressure coming from Derek Tucker from the safety spot. You know, Finley is not going to wow you with, hey, you know, watch me throw the ball 80 yards. I've got the strongest arm in college football. It's not that. His arm is adequate. It's perfectly fine. But it's all the other stuff. It's the timing, the accuracy, the toughness. The smarts, all those things make you feel like, geez, he's a guy you can count on, you can trust to make good plays. Rod, I think he's a master at avoiding the catastrophic mistake. Yep. You're right, Q. He'll check it down, he'll throw it away, he'll come back to fight the next play. Here comes Gillespie, powering his way ahead, close to the sticks. The senior playing his 50th and final game for North Carolina State tonight. Q, were you surprised that Finley came back for his senior, his sixth year, and that he plays in this game? No, I think this is a team that, that had big dreams this year. I mean, you look at their record right now. They, they honestly thought that they could you know, win the ACC and make a run at the whole thing with, with the, the cast of uh, offensive line, veteran on that left side. The wide receivers, etc. High talent team this year. Penalty marker thrown from the far side for a false start. Or perhaps an illegal formation. False start before the play. False start. Offense number 42. Five yard penalty remains first down. That's Dylan Ottenreef, one of the tight ends for North Carolina State. This is a different scenario for Finley tonight. He has spent his entire career going from Boise State to North Carolina State. In all 38 of his starts prior to tonight, Eliah Drinkwitz was his offensive coordinator. Drinkwitz has taken the job as the head coach at Appalachian State. He has already gotten into the swing of things in Boone, North Carolina. So tonight, a couple of different coordinators calling the plays for Finley. There goes the freshman, Ricky Person, with a great run. 14 yards for the Wake Forest, North Carolina native. He is the quickest of the running backs at NC State, and you'll see that here. Just a nice little lateral move and a little jitterbug to get to the outside, and he made a couple guys miss. But what I liked was the finish of the run. Finish with some power. Missed some time, four games with various injuries this year, including the finale against East Carolina. Finley, sideline. Ooh, C.J. Riley extended. Nearly got that grab. That'll bring up third down and one. You know, you mentioned the uh, the change for Finley not having his offensive coordinator. He might be calling his own plays. Yeah. I and mean, as as long as he's done this and as much as he's been around, he might be telling his new co-coordinators, this is what I like. That's Des Kitchings in the box and George McDonald on the field. They're the running back coach and wide receiver coach, respectively. Ooh, a little end around here. They give it to Thayer Thomas, who's got the first down pending the penalty flag. <laughs> 
Pac-12 crew today. Offside, defense number 34 lined up in the neutral zone. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. It's first Dave, down, Dalen North Carolina Matt, State. Who got called for lining up in the neutral zone. George McDonald was the offensive coordinator at Syracuse. That was the last time he had called plays. Meanwhile, Des Kitchings upstairs had called plays all the way back in 2010 when he was at Vanderbilt. So it's been a bit. What they told us is usually it's the three-man and group think tank with Drinkwitz. It's just a two-man think tank tonight. That's all. Ricky Person runs well on first down and picks up five. His quickness has really helped him. And you know, getting back to the play calling, I, I have to believe that they're relying an awful lot on Finley. You know, since you know he's not a freshman quarterback. I mean, he, he has his own ideas and thoughts. He knows what he's what he likes, and I'm sure he had great input into the game plan. Well, if you're going to have anybody yeah. with a coordinator change, isn't this the quarterback? Yeah. Or at least one of the quarterbacks you'd want. <laughs> right back to Person. There's the penetration from the second best rushing defense in the country. Buddy Johnson makes the tackle. Buddy Johnson is huge tonight because Otaro Alaka, the leading tackler, for Texas A&M part of that great rushing defense is out so is Donovan Wilson the safety their second leading tackler tonight well remember this is a defense that has struggled in the secondary also with throws down the field and that you got to believe that Finley wants to test those corners on third down it's Gillespie Still churning, but he gets stopped short of the line to gain. They're within the field goal range of their freshman kicker here. And Christopher Dunn, a true freshman out of Lexington, North Carolina, will come out. Set a North Carolina State record with 21 field goal makes this year. He's made 13 straight going back to October the 6th against Boston College and that wasn't technically a miss it was a block by the Eagles he's had a dynamite freshman year trying to get the Wolfpack on the board play clock winding from 43 and Dunn keeps doing what he's done all season long extended drive leads to three for Dave Doran TIAA Bank Field. Ryan Finley leading a 12 play, six minute drive that ends with points. Kyle Bambard will get set to kick away. got a kick return touchdown this year they'll take it out to the 23. we told you what's on espn on new year's day don't forget the other networks have big games too the outback bowl on espn 2 at noon eastern that'll be the first official game of the new calendar year with the bulldogs and the hawkeyes and then the vrbo citrus bowl over on abc at 1 eastern benny snell one of the best running backs in the country going for kentucky against penn state Kellen Ma, the opening series, the 62-yard run for the touchdown. Yeah, it's been his legs so far, not so much his arm. He's been missing high so far in the passing attack. He'll hand it off to the true freshman, Jay Sean Corbin. Picks up about four, running into Isaiah Moore. Benny Snell, we mentioned, yep. second in the SEC behind Travion Williams in rushing this year. This is a very good NC State rushing attack normally. They held Travis Etienne to a season low 39 yards earlier this year. Clemson's fine running back. They're pretty strong up front. Again, the issue for NC State is not up front. It's, it's on the back end. Yep. Mond has that one batted into the air and intercepted. Picked up by Andreas Bryant. Darian Roseboro flipped it into the air for the pick. What a 
job by Roseboro and Bryant. And Bryant is rushing the quarterback. He's actually blocked, and he, he apparently hears it. And then he just turns around, and there the ball is. What, what great, great presence for Bryant and the soft hands for the 330-pounder, huh? Look at this. He stops. Roseboro blocks it. Turns around on him. What did you just say? I, the front is not hand. the issue. The front yeah. is not the issue yeah. for NC State. They've been very good all season. And those two veterans up front have combined Q for 100 career games. Sudden change. Take a shot. If Eli Drinkwitz was still the OC for NC State, he would definitely be throwing this ball downfield on first down here. Let's see what the new coordinators come up with. Finley with some pressure coming from Dalen Mack. He'll launch it away. That's a key matchup tonight, guys, as well. Dalen Mack is a 320-pound bowling ball up front going up against the Remington Award winner for the nation's top center in Garrett Bradbury. It's a good matchup, and Bradbury is a very athletic center. And if you're not going to bring a lot of pressure and rely on a four-man rush, you know, guys like Mack have got to get there. Yeah. Or at least collapse the pocket. Tough to do against Bradbury and a veteran offensive line that has been spectacular this year. Little floater to Jacoby Myers. Set a North Carolina State record with 89 grabs coming in. Four-man rush again. Myers again. He's a he's not a big guy. 5'8", 170. He's got to pick up the slack. From that slot position, he gets a chance to run that out. And with Harmon out, guys like Myers and Wiley, you know, have to have big games. Here comes Gillespie. Got close to the sticks, but looks to be short. Market just short as we approach a half minute to go in the opening quarter. Rod, the best offensive lineman. You guys mentioned Bradbury, but the veterans are on the left side. Tyler Jones, the left tackle. Tyrone Prescott, the first team All American at left guard. They've been the left handed running team most of the season for that reason. Texas AM. We'll Texas call a timeout. First charge timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. Jimbo Fisher, you get a look at the former BCS championship winner with Florida State. The final year of the BCS. Signs that 10 year, $75 million deal. Last December, he takes over as the head coach. Guaranteed. Guaranteed money. Clemson and Alabama with a difficult schedule early. Win some impressive games against Kentucky, South Carolina. They blew a game against Auburn, unfortunately, for them. They get the win against Ole Miss. You see this up and down season that culminated in what Jimbo called one of the most epic games in college football history, the win over LSU. You know, he got boots and a replica national championship <laughs> trophy when he signed his deal. Expectations? Are they they don't think so, no. no. Not when you have a, a renovated Kyle Field <laughs> and a $20 million suites abound. There's no expectation there. Here come the Wolfpack on fourth down, and Ryan Finley sneaks it for the first down. And that'll close out the opening quarter here in Jacksonville. First meeting all time between North Carolina State and Texas A&M. But don't forget, Jimbo Fisher knows the Wolfpack well. He went 5-3 and three in his Florida State career against the Wolfpack. A lot of competitive games in that matchup. We're hoping for another one tonight. Seeking the lead on first and 10 from the Aggie 14. And movement before the play. Offside, defense number 46, causing the offense to react. Five yard penalty remains first down. Senior Landis Durham who's getting ready for the East-West Shrine game after this one's over. Gets tagged with the penalty. <laughs> 
Finley. End zone. Riley. What a catch! <laughs> C.J. Riley stepping up the depth chart and stepping up the wow factor. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Wow. Nothing Miles Jones could do about that at corner. This is a perfect throw by Finley. Great placement. He gives his receiver only Riley a chance. And Riley, it's 6-4, sticks out the paw, brings it in. But it all began with the great touch, the perfect throw, only where his guy could make a play on it. And then great body position by Riley against uh, Jones. Wow, what a catch. That was impressive. NC State lining up in the pre-snap formation for the kick. And they'll settle in. C.J. Riley needing to step up for NC State with Kelvin Harmon sitting out the bowl game. Dunn remains perfect on the points after this year. You know, this is a conversation that we're having more and more and more, and it's great for guys like C.J. Riley, right. who get a chance, an opportunity to step up into a major role for a team like North Carolina State. But a couple of years ago, it was Christian McCaffrey, Leonard Fournette, We'll sit out the bowl game. All right. of a sudden, Rod, those numbers have extrapolated and skyrocketed in terms of guys sitting out now. Well, it's more than 20 guys now for this bowl season, and next year the number will go up. It'll keep going up. And I know a lot of people get frustrated by it and upset by it, but it's the players right and I have no problem with it. So if we want this to change and not have this many star players out. Something's going to have to change. You can't penalize players to make them play. But you can certainly try to be creative and come up with incentives to encourage them to stick around and play in the game. And I think that's a conversation that needs to get started because otherwise who knows we may have more than 30 next season. 40 after that you saw DeAndre Baker highlighted the reason for that that's a New Year's six game that's Correct. the sugar bowl that he's yeah. sitting out of so yeah. that's something to think about is somebody going to sit out a playoff game eventually because they don't necessarily want to get hurt here's Rashad Paul on the return for Texas A&M QE's out to the 25. Rod a question why isn't it as simple as just giving these uh, these athletes insurance policies whether it's from from the school or from the bowl well, if you take the case of Jalen Smith, who was at Notre Dame, Notre Dame and had an insurance policy, uh, the policy, I believe, paid out some $700,000 to him. Instead, he lost about $20 million because he wasn't drafted where he was projected to go. So the, the word among agents and talking to players, yeah, you know, great, wonderful, but the insurance isn't going to really protect you and cover your career. These are discussions that obviously require more nuance than what we can yeah. give you in a three and a half hour game, but they're important discussions Absolutely. for this sport going forward. Kellen Mond back to work. Slinging it to the far sideline. Nick McLeod did a good job in space of running down the receiver. McLeod on that outside, the junior, able to shut down Kendrick Rogers. The forward progress gives him about three. Watch McLeod as he makes a good high tackle, keeps his arms in there, drives his legs, and waits for the posse to come. That's what you do when you're a corner and you got a big guy in front of you. You're just begging for your big old linebackers to come over and help you out. Trust me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if anybody knows from experience, I would imagine my man here does. Here comes Travion Williams. Isaiah Moore ends up stopping him after five, or after a two, I should say. Well, Third and five. Yeah, right now, Mond has not been established you know, as a quarterback. I mean, in the passing game, the NC State defense actually has played very well. They gave up just that 62 yard run, but we haven't seen Mond yet get into a rhythm. We haven't seen Williams get into a rhythm. So I'm sure Jimbo Fisher is kind of searching for how to get that going. They've only mustered 57 yards on the other 16 plays outside of the touchdown. Time for Mon under thrown, incomplete. 
Yeah, he, he held back very long, too long, and had a hitch. He, he was afraid to let it go. You can tell he's just not in the rhythm and flow of it. You know, he had that throw early, and what, Jimbo Fisher is probably going to come over and tell him, too, you know. His receiver probably, he felt, didn't run this, the right route, but he held that ball and didn't want to let go of it. That's right, Rod. He, he held it because Osmond could not generate any kind of separation and, and was not open. In fact, he turned to the official and thought he was held. He was guarded by Tyler Baker Williams, the freshman. Dayer Thomas from the 19. Good cutback, and he turns out a solid return of 12. Two minutes into the second, Wolfpack with the lead and the ball. And the sixth year senior, Ryan Finley, is back when you come back. We're on their last two drives, a long field goal drive and a touchdown after a pick. The touchdown was good, man. Tonight's clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle. The delivery from Finley and the clutch catch by Riley. Yeah, Riley does a nice job of getting position, and then there's no opportunity for Jones to really kind of push him and force him to the edge. So there was plenty of room for that ball to be dropped in by Finley, and he did it with perfect touch, and Riley kept himself available out there using his hands and, you know, a little mutual combat. That's fine down there in the end zone. Finley completed 68% of his passes this year to lead the ACC. Six of ten to start tonight. You know, it's hard to believe when you think back to Finley getting to NC State. He transferred to be a backup out of Boise State where he was the backup. I'm trying to see if there's an issue here with the officials, why we're delayed. I wonder if there's a communication problem or something. Yeah, and, and you know, back to Finley, the yeah. thing that's fascinating is that he's become the better pro prospect. Yeah, how about that? Top five guy in yeah, the chase. After leaving uh, Boise State. It's just a, an example how you know, sometimes transferring is the right thing for a player, and we've had an awful lot of quarterbacks and a lot of discussion about quarterbacks uh, transferring and not not waiting their turn. And a lot of that happens, and you know, he's had some success here, and NC State has had a lot of successful quarterbacks. You know, um, I take issue with one. The that guy, guy he, in the middle. He made 30 starts, though. That guy. How do you have an issue with 30 starts in a Wolfpack uniform? Because they didn't love him enough. They they sent him to Wisconsin. There's no reason you can't take some uh, he's pride a, in the he's guy. He's a badger in my mind. 30 starts. He's a badger. I, I probably feel that way, too, but he started 30 <laughs> games. <laughs> Good throw to the outside, and Emeka Emezi breaks free. In the Texas A&M territory with a penalty marker thrown at the end. By the way, it was communication issues with the headset pieces, the earpieces that the officials used to communicate with one another. They were clearing up some issues on that end. That's why we had the delay. At the end of the play, personal foul, face mask, offense, number 86, 15 yard penalty. It'll still remain first down, first and 10. Now that's unusual. You don't usually get an offensive player called for that when you stiff arm, but if you hang on there, there's the push. From that angle, it, you can see the head snap back. And he must have held on to the face match there. Amezi was a high school running back. He talked about his ability after the catch. Good spin move. He loves to use that, that free arm, that stiff arm. Well, Q, you know that running backs and receivers try to get that stiff arm in your face, right? Now, see, hit the problem here is that he hangs on to it. He's grabbed it. Now, if you stiff arm open hand and you push it, you're not going to get flagged. But when you grab that face mask, as he did, you're going to get flagged. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. It'll be first and five for North Carolina State. It's like a holding penalty on the offense when you go downfield. You have a holding penalty from the end of the run. It still takes the yardage away, and then you take into account where the ball is spotted to set up the new down and distance. So the officials are trying to make sure they have the proper down and distance here. It should be first down about five, and it is yep. from the 41. Yep.
Riley has the first down. You know, Q, we've not seen Texas A&M go after Finley. I know they respect his ability to adjust and handle the blitz, but you might just get picked apart if you don't go after him. What do you think? Well, NC State has the weapons on the outside, even without Harmon in the lineup. So I'm sure if you're Mike Elko, you're rethinking your strategy. There goes a big run for Person out to the 36 and now the 35-yard line in A&M territory. Either way, Rod, this defense right now is juiceless. No emotion, no bounce, no energy. Finley underthrows his target, Thomas. And that'll bring up second down. Yeah, you're right, Q. There's not a lot of juice out there. And those linebackers, the youngsters who got his first start, Buddy Johnson, number one, you know, and Dodson moving over to play uh, a locker spot, they're getting pushed around a little bit. And I, I suspect there's a little hesitancy when you aren't as comfortable in your old spot. You tend to think a little bit. And when it's, when it's your first start, you know, a little butterflies. Understandable. Buddy Johnson's first start at the linebacker spot, the sophomore from Dallas. There goes Person. Good penetration by Johnson. Yep. Right on cue. Well, he read that one perfectly. Great job as he just did that. Nice little deal there, finding things. He's in the middle of the field. He's looking, and, and he's going to read things, and he's going to shuffle on over and see what's happening. He sees the flow. He understands where it's going, reading his cues. He just nice right through. That's a really good job. That'll make you get comfortable and not worry about it being your first start. An excellent third down team has not converted one tonight. Finley, after the bobble, trying to use his feet, and Dodson shuts down the play at the 32 yard line. This would be a career long field goal attempt for Christopher Dunn. His career long make is 44 yards. He did that against Virginia earlier this season. This will be from 49 for the true freshman out of Lexington, North Carolina. Plenty on it. Nobody's more hyped than Dunn. North Carolina State has scored on its last three drives. How about that one from Christopher? in January and, and both teams participated in a service event to benefit First Coast Blessings in a Backpack packing 500 bags of non-perishable food to provide elementary school kid uh, kids with food on the weekends during the school year just one of the great things that's part of bowl season the teams get a chance to go take a trip play an extra game get more practice time in have some fun like Christopher Dunn's doing with his fellow Wolfpack team members and they get to serve the does, community does as well. Does any kicker get more excited than than he does? Hard, hard pressed to come up think. with somebody. I remember Michael Dixon last year's Ray Guy Award winner was mm -hmm. pretty solid. I enjoyed that. He was an MVP of a bowl game last year. Jay Sean Corbin from the five. Solid return out across the 30 yard line. Bambard the kicker stopped it. I want to take you back to the linebacker play at AM. It was shaky early, starting to get better. Here is uh, Dodson. He's spying the quarterback, Finley. Watch how great he plays this. Stays where he needs to. An open field tackle makes that perfectly. So Johnson and Dodson, that last series, started to come on and make some plays, and they're getting more comfortable. Remember, first start for Johnson, and then you've got Dodson playing in a locker's place tonight, a place, a position he doesn't normally play. Mon from the 35. Under pressure, delivered very late. Well, he was feeling the heat from Louis Asus, Louis Asus, beg your pardon, the sophomore out of New York. Well, NC State's been bringing pressure all night, and this time it almost gets there. It's enough pressure to really, really bother 
dots and that's Asus number two who pr uh, brought the pressure that time and they're not going to back off. You know you keep bringing pressure until the offense makes the band play with a touchdown so don't expect NC State to back off of bringing the books. of Rodgers even for those long arms that'll bring up third down and 10 Texas A&M after that opening salvo with the Mon touchdown run has got nothing going since Mon's in a funk Five and where is Jace Sternberger no catches you're right 5 of 12 Slot to the left side. Mon. Heaving and he's got his man. Courtney Davis with a big play for the Aggies. And just like that, a throw can get you back on track. Now watch Mon stay in there and hang with this. Only a three-man rush. He knows he's got time and steps up. A little bit of a late hit there. Perfectly delivered to Davis. Over the top of Griffin. They pick up 40 yards on third down and 10. From one 35 yard line to the other. Williams gets blown up in the backfield by Roseboro. Senior playing his 51st and final game of his NC State career. He came back for his senior year because he had promised his father Johnny he would leave college with a degree. Johnny passed away last October at age 43. Darian said Johnny was my best friend, my coach, my hero. He plans on graduating in a spot with a degree in sports management. An impressive young man is a veteran on that front for NC State. Kellen Mond connects with Jamon Osbin. Picks up about nine as Ingram stops him shy of the first down marker. Just the rhythm and good timing. You see that Mon seems to have picked it up with those last two throws. Sometimes it's all take. One throw to get you going. Yeah, a little rhythm, right? Yep. Now remember, third and short here. You've got a down to play with. This might not be a bad time to go ahead and take a shot. Trying to keep it on the ground here and nothing there for the leading rusher in the SEC, Louis Asus. What do you do? Plays, yeah. You kick this, you go for it. Well, Texas A&M has only gone for it on fourth down nine times this year. Well, here comes number 10 because they just sent in another yep. tight end. They just brought in Colin Gillespie, the senior from Katy, Texas. They're going jumbo here. Three tight ends. Here comes Williams, and he gets stopped by Roseboro again. Brock Miller, the weak side linebacker, read it immediately. He jumped in there and then got some help from Asus right away. Both linebackers. Got there fast. They had their pads lower. They won the leverage battle. What a moment for Darian, a senior out of Lincolnton, North Carolina. We told you what this senior year meant to this young man. He's been impactful, to say the least, for that haunted NC State front, giving Jimbo some trouble. State with a chance at 10 wins for just the second time in program history. 2002 when Chuck Amato was the head coach and Phillip Rivers was a QB. Ryan Finley's chased Phillip Rivers' records. He's on his way to the NFL. Kelvin Harmon and Jermaine Pratt, the leading receiver and leading tackler for this North Carolina State team, are sitting out tonight. But this defense has stepped up without Pratt. Roseboro closing out the last drive. Dave Dorn with a Five and three ACC record this year in the Atlantic Division. Back to back winning seasons for NC State. Start this drive from the 27. Gillespie gets hit in the backfield. 
Good penetration by Deshaun Capers Smith. A reminder that ESPN Plus is your home for more sports, more schools, more conferences, more ESPN. You can start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. That's what we're going to be using tomorrow with all the huge New Year's Day games. The start of 2019's college football run all the way to the title game next Monday. Finley into traffic through the hands of Riley. Yeah, no pressure, though. Yeah, that's the problem for AM. They can't get any pressure on Finley. And they are, they're only bringing four. And so Finley has plenty of time, and he's a guy that can dissect your defense. And I know that they're afraid of exposing their corners in single coverage, but at some point you may have to decide, I got no choice. I got to bring a fifth guy or a sixth guy to try to move Finley. Yet to convert a third down. Looking for Riley, and it's incomplete. Riley getting into it with Miles Jones. Had to be separated by the headlinesman. Nah, There's nothing wrong with a little chatter between a corner and a receiver. You kind of you have a conversation throughout the game. Mitchell Sometimes you, you ask Mitchell. about the weather. I was going to say you get to know your, your counterpart across the line. Of ask him about good more. restaurants. I mean, if you were a receiver, I would consistently ask you, you know, where should I go eat? Yeah, as long as they deliver you some food, I think that's all it matters. <laughs> I'm not picky by any means. Rashad Paul backpedaling to the 19. Gets a good block and has some space. Good return by Rashad Paul, run out by the long snapper Tyler Griffiths. Well, the last time a &M was out, they really struggled. Their offensive line is really getting beat up, and sometimes it's with pressure, with linebackers in a blitz. Q, not always, and Jimbo's not happy, Q. It's never a good sign when the head coach comes over to your position group, and Jim Turner is the coach of this O-line, and next thing you know, Jimbo's standing right behind him. Most of the discussion dealt with the left side of the line. Dan Moore, left tackle, and Keaton Sutherland, left guard. Their inability to reach, their inability to pin. At one point, him asking Sutherland, can you get any push? And the old line coach jumped in and says, no, he's not getting any push. <laughs> A top 30 rushing offense this year hasn't done much since that Mon touchdown. So he'll go to the air and find his top target from the tight end spot. One of the best in the nation is Jay Sternberger. 28-yard catch for the junior. Well, it's about time. You know, Jimbo's offense requires a really good tight end like he had at Florida State, and this guy is fantastic. He started out at Kansas and actually left that place, and then in the junior college, Jimbo saw him on tape and fell in love with him right away. I got to have him. He got him. What did Dave Huxtable tell us, the defensive coordinator for NC State? Great reference to Nick O'Leary yep. at FSU. Mond, long throw to the sideline for Rodgers, incomplete. See, the thing about Sternberger, he is so big, he's a problem for safeties. Yeah. You know, 6'4", 250, and he's so quick and fluid, he's a problem when you put a linebacker on him. And when you play zone, he understands how to find the soft spot. Consensus All-American, led all tight ends with 10 touchdowns this year. Was not a finalist for the Mackey Award for the nation's top tight end. Was not one of the three finalists for it. That was something Jimbo Fisher thought was as big of a snub as anything during awards season. Here comes Travion Williams with space. And there goes Travion down inside the 10. He is down. That ball came out at the end of the play, but it's first down and goal for the Aggies. Nothing wrong with the right side of the line on that play. Nope. They got to the edge, blocked the force, gave a corner, made that available for Williams. Does he stay in? Yeah, yeah I think he's he down stayed to in. And yeah. He's, he's yeah. down all the way inside the five. Yeah. And so maybe that little chat with the offensive line by Jimbo Fisher, you know, had some results there. He had 10 yards on his first six carries. He busted out for 30 on that one. First and goal, a &M. It's Williams with the cut. 
to the end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. You know, you, you'd like for the left side of the line to get something done as the, that was requested by Jimbo, but it doesn't happen. But it doesn't matter when you have Williams. No push, nothing there, but he finds it. He feels it to the outside, cuts back in. Getting a stalemate sometimes is all you need for Williams to be able to do his thing. His 16th rushing touchdown led all SEC running backs. Most of that damage done late in the year against good competition in conference play. Two big running plays for the Aggies have accounted for their two touchdowns at Texas A&M's back in front. In a jiffy brought to you by Jiffy Lube. How's this for a jiffy? Yeah, this key play. Look at 54 and 81 Green and Sternberger. Give the edge to Williams. They sealed off that corner, which allowed Williams to get down there and set up this touchdown run where Williams showed you his ability and his vision, change direction, get into the end zone. And now the guy who quietly led the SEC in rushing is off to a pretty good ball game now. He Nobody just, talked about him no, during the season. I, I think more so maybe as, as we got later in the year, but I agree with you. Not a lot of hype around no. Travion Williams early in the year. Well, this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. And we thank you, Allstate. New Year's Eve in Jacksonville. Turned into a great night. Got to be out on Jacksonville Landing is it, for a little while last night. Is it just me, or did the 2018 football season just fly Ooh. by? But it felt like we we're uh, in Tucson not too long ago. Yeah. Kicking off week one. Think about this. We're one week away from being in Santa Clara for Alabama Clemson round four for the national title on the line. All day for Ryan Finley, but coverage downfield on its second down. There's no foul for intentional ground when the quarterback was outside the pocket. Second down. Of course, NC State got off to a great start this year. They were 5 0 before they had to face Clemson. Game time with three three. Tyrone Prescott, a little slow to get up. He's their first team All American guard playing his final collegiate game. He's part of one of the best offensive lines in all of college football, not just this year, but over the course of the last few years under offensive line coach Dwayne Ledford. Dwayne has now been hired away by Scott Satterfield at Louisville as the new offensive line coach. John Garrison, who did a solid job at Florida Atlantic under Lane Kiffin, has now taken over the O-line coach duties. Yeah, Bradbury's outstanding. I mean, this offensive line, remember Chris uh, Selfo, great yeah. uh, head coach? Offensive lines are his son Joe Selfo is a graduate assistant here and has worked closely with Bradbury for a couple years. And he played here was an offensive lineman, so they really focus and give individual training to their offensive linemen here. That snaps a streak of four straight incompletions for Finley as he finds Riley. Top of the hour here in Jacksonville, Florida for the 2018 Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kessnick, our fantastic crew, closing out our season together and closing out 2018. Three hours away on the East Coast from the ball dropping and starting up 2019. Hope all the best to you and yours in the upcoming year. You know what surprised me? What's up? Neither one of these head coaches has a resolution for 2019. <laughs> I thought surely one of them would say, hey, you know, playoffs or something. And they're like, nah, haven't had time to think about it. Yeah, well, I mean, that being said, they've been pretty busy, admittedly. It's been a hectic month of December. Although, listen, no one's going to really sympathize with head coaches. And, and I understand you get paid a lot of money to do what you do. But it has been a hectic December with the early signing period, bull preparation, the close of the season, the holiday break, and now here, finally, you these make a get resolution, to... though. It's not that What's hard, your right? resolution? That's what, that's what America, I'm sure, is clamoring for. More chocolate. That boy. That's what I wanted to hear. Finley takes a shot as he's able to deliver, but Inmezi unable to hold on to it in a tough spot. 
fourth down. Good job by the AM defense to get off the field. Landis Durham brought some heat. And O'Neill had the coverage. Here's your guy. More punting. A.J. Cole, senior from College Park, Georgia, making his 52nd career start at the punting position for NC State tonight. Shot Paul will see that one head out of bounds. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. From the end zone to the uprights, nothing comes between hard work and a goal. Goodyear, more driven. Is the blimp going to be okay here in Jacksonville when the fireworks go off? Oof. I didn't, we didn't think about that, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think they have thought about that ahead of time, here. Fireworks is not the issue. It's a, it was the, the fog that's, that's been right. rolling in the last <laughs> I, well, two nights. Well, I swear, we thought we were set for Fog Bowl 2018 yeah. here in Jacksonville with the humidity and the fog rolling in over the last couple of days. You can't see across the river from our hotel downtown. You can't see more than five <laughs> floors. If you're on the fifth floor higher in our hotel, you it, can't it see the ground. But that's it, it, it didn't last thing. long. We had blue skies after a couple of hours. Yeah, that was nice. I was very happy to see that today. There's Travion Williams back to work. Except short yardage. I, I guarantee you, when you get to the Bay Area for the championship game, we got a little fog waiting for you oh, there. I don't, I don't doubt that. <laughs> a cast of a thousand, I'm sure, will be ready to go. Rod and myself will all be there for our full on blast coverage of the national championship game. The main broadcast on ESPN next Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time, round four. Go coast to coast for the next championship game. There is Dexter Wright. One of the safeties for NC State, redshirt senior being tended to. Well, the staff tends to Dexter. We remind you that you can watch like a fan all bowl season long with YouTube TV. And we got to look at the upcoming matchup round four between Alabama and Clemson. Currently two to one in favor of Nick Saban's. Crew. Look, and, and those two teams aren't going anywhere. You know, right now, they are head and shoulders above everybody else in yep. college football. They're both young. Uh, they both have young quarterbacks yep. who are great. They both have defensive lines that are that are deep. So they'll be in the hunt next year as well. I know some people get frustrated and they say, hey, is that great for college football? For those of us who follow it closely, you know, we love excellence and we love that kind of competition. I understand that there are others who would look out there and say, oh, we'd like to see another team get in there. You know what the answer to that is? Beat them. Beat them. You got to beat them. Got to beat them. That's championship level sweater work right there by that crew. Mm. Semi-final game. Yeah. Coordinated. <laughs> Semi-final game last year. Alabama beat Clemson. The other two in the national championship matchups. We had a bit of a game clock issue. Here in the second quarter. Mon delivers on target. He's got Rodgers for the first down to the 42-yard line. You know, ever since Mon completed that throw along the right sideline several plays ago, He's gotten more confident. His his accuracy has been on target. I'm sure he had a couple chats on the sideline about, you know, basics and making sure he was doing his fundamentals, but he looks so much more comfortable and so much better uh, on this drive and the last drive uh, as well. Bond on the crossing route finds Osmond. up five on the catch. That's what the game clock looks like right now. There's a clock malfunction here at TIAA Bank Field, so we'll try to keep you up to date. The referees will try to announce it every so often. Williams with a good block by the center. Eric McCoy. That springs him loose inside the Wolfpack 40-yard line. Oh, when you can get to the edge, you got a chance. And Carson Green made sure that Williams, sorry, McCoy made sure that Williams got There's to the three, edge. 3-5-2 on the game clock. 3-5-2. You get your center pulling out, showing you his athleticism. Blocks and seals off, and lots of room for Williams. That was a terrific block by McCoy. 
3.50 to go here in the opening half. Time being kept by the officiating crew now. Mon. Good extension by the lengthy Rodgers to snare that one. They'll pick up eight yards and the clock continues to move. Here comes the heat. This is when this is NC time. State's probably going to have to dial it up and they'll just have to hang on and hope that their corners can stay with Rodgers, who's 6'3", or stay with Davis and Osmond, who are also pretty tall and, and physical. Williams has got enough for the first down inside of three minutes to play there's two minutes and 51 seconds two minutes and 51 seconds in the half 251 left in the half With time, flipping it up there for Cameron Buckley, and Buckley grabs it for four yards. Plenty of time. NC State defensively has backed off the pressure, and Mon has had plenty of time to settle in and find the guy he wants. 2:20 and counting here in the first half remaining. Keeps it. It was the right call. Gets dragged down by Dexter Wright, but it's first and goal for Texas AM. It's the same play in which he ran 62 There's yards for a touchdown. One it's a zone read. You see the really push down hard by Conte 52, and that gave the edge to Mon. Minute 45 to go here in the first half. That's a great call by Jimbo Fisher. Just setting that up. And Q, 147 rushing yards now for Texas A&M. Mon, play fake. Throws on the move to the end zone. And incomplete for Osmond. They had it for a moment that flipped into the air. A lot of people were holding their breath on that play. Yeah, he had a shot at it. Great job by Mon, looking all the way to his left, coming back There's to his right, finding Osborne and put it right on the money. But a real strong play by Ingram out there, fighting through. Four or five in the series. Some shorter passes. 121 remaining. Clock is stopped on second and goal. Where is Sternberger? Right there. It's Williams. Runs into a stack of Wolfpack at the five. It'll be third down and goal coming up as we approach a minute to play here in the first half. One oh five and counting. Two timeouts for both teams. You've got two tall athletic receivers you can use down here. You've got Rodgers, 13, on the far side. And then you've got Sternberger. They just motioned Rodgers to the near side of the field. Mon, back of the end zone. You called it, Rod. Rodgers reaching high for the touchdown. Well, Rodgers is allowed to roam free through the end zone. No one puts a body on him, and he runs the post route, and Mon does the right thing. He's six foot four, put the ball up high, let him go get it. The redshirt sophomore made a name for himself during that seven overtime thriller. Big catch after big catch, including the game winning two point conversion in the seventh overtime 
to clinch it for Texas A&M. You know, 6'3", 6'4", but with pads and helmets and everything. Didn't he look 6'9", out there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look at these receivers. We've got basketball players yeah, man. playing football. Just playing receiver, playing tight end. There's 32 seconds left in the first half. You just heard our lead seconds. official, Mark Duddy, say 32 seconds remaining here in the first half. Two timeouts still remain for North Carolina State. It'll be North Carolina State ball to start the second half. Well, coming up on our Mercedes-Benz halftime report, give you Urban's bucket list as he makes his final appearance as the head coach of Ohio State in tomorrow's Rose Bowl game. We'll give you an All-State Sugar Bowl preview as well from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Desmond Howard will walk you right through it. There's nothing like watching the Rose Bowl game. I heard Kirk Herbstreit the other night during the semifinal game say he gets excited about seeing the grass at the Rose Bowl on that yeah. special game. Well, but hey, you tell know, me about it. I've never been. Well, you have to do it. If you do it yeah. right, you know, you catch the Rose Parade. And you move on over to Pasadena and you're right when you come into that area through the neighborhoods into the stadium you see the Rose Bowl logo you get to the field immaculate you see the hills out behind it, it it's an incredible experience and a lot of folks have done it for years on New Year's Day watching if you get a chance to go go Jimbo Fisher has a national championship to his name he's just one of four active coaches with a national title and obviously that will change tomorrow after Urban Meyer coaches what's presumed to be his final game for Ohio State and then Dabo Swinney and Nick Saban get to square off for another one <laughs> next week um, you know if Nick Saban gets one more and he has a shot at it in a few days yep. he's uh, He's beyond the bear. Passing up Bear Bryant, who, by the way, was Texas A&M's head yep. coach before he went to Alabama. In fact, the last time Texas A&M played a bowl game in this state was the 1957 Gator Bowl, and that was Bear Bryant's final game as A&M head coach. Imezi makes the grab, gets dragged out of bounds, and only two seconds come off the time. 30 seconds remaining, and the clock is stopped. Well, this is another 26 seconds 26 oh, 26, seconds. 26 seconds another good opportunity for Finley to to show off what he does in a truncated two-minute drill this field goal kicker Christopher Dunn has nailed a 49 yarder tonight as well Finley in a collapsing pocket finds him clock stops to move the chains the first down on a gate of 10 getting the ball out working the sideline they know they've got two timeouts in their back pocket and trying to get in position for at least a field goal 20 seconds on the clock the did get out of bounds so the clock will move on the snap <laughs> using the sideline and Myers makes the grab now, this looks like an NFL quarterback trying to direct the two-minute drill right now doesn't it? Uh, he 16 understands they need seconds, 16 seconds and a half 16 seconds 16 seconds they need about 30 yards here yep they're gonna have to push it down the field a little bit more there is done you get inside the 35 will be close to that range he can work the middle and use a tight out tie out time out yeah still got two left Finley in the traffic and he's picked off intercepted by Leon O'Neal Jr. the first interception of the seniors career the middle of the field Leon is the always field is an interception and a first down for Texas A&M there's five seconds left in the first half five, five seconds. seconds left now yeah, the middle of the field is always dark and full of terrors, and if you're not careful, <laughs> something will get you. And even Finley, as experienced as he is, takes a little contact, overthrows his guy, and then there's a pick. And that run back by O'Neal was important. He got down to the 35-yard line. Seth Small is the true freshman field goal kicker for Texas A&M. This would be a career-long tying 52-yarder. He's already hit from this distance twice this year. 
And a timeout called. Timeout, North Carolina State, the second of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Well, this is a freebie for him. He ought to feel relaxed and confident. It's a scoring opportunity yep. that AM didn't expect to have. And again, that was a 25-yard run back to put him yep. into field goal range. It's a heads-up play by the senior as well. And now Seth Small, There's who took over in kicking half. duties five in week three the after Daniel LaCamera suffered a cracked bone in his non-kicking foot against Clemson. So here comes this true freshman out of nowhere and has a dynamite season earning SEC all-freshman honors, Q. Ideal conditions right now. Temperatures in the upper 60s. No winds. It's a little humid out. Two of his misses recently have been when he has yanked the ball, pulled it. Let's see how he handles this distance kick. Wide right from the start. Looked like he had the distance on it, but it was wide to start it. There were five That's seconds the on the, the clock half. on the kick, and that will take us to halftime. Hopefully we'll have the clock issues sorted out on the field in the second half. The Texas A&M with a 21 to 13 lead at the halftime break. Let's go down to Quinn with Jimbo Fisher. Coach, we saw you uh, counseling your offensive line. What type of response did they offer after that uh, little discussion? They did. They came back really well. We got the balance back. We got protecting the ball. We knew we thought we could make some throws. We got some time. And then we got the balance back and got the running game going and got it mixed in, which we have to have. That's the way we are on offense. What's the biggest challenge that their quarterback presents? Uh, their quarterback? Oh, accurate. Knows what's going on at all times. Gets the ball out of his hands. Never a negative play. I mean, luckily, we got a pick right there, which we could have taken advantage of those three points. But, you know, he doesn't make mistakes. He's very poised. Just a great player. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Q, thank you very much. We'll step aside with AM on top by three. The Mercedes Benz halftime report comes your way after these messages. Welcome back to Jacksonville and the 2018 Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, all part of Capital One Bowl Mania. North Carolina State will get the ball to start half number two, trailing 21 to 13. Adam Amin, Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick back with you in Jacksonville. This is a Texas A&M offense that started hot, got <laughs> cold, and then they leaned on the two guys that have done a lot of damage in Mond and Williams. Yeah, and, and Mond really came on. You know, he had the big run to start the game, but then after that, things kind of kind of hit a low, but he came alive when he made a completion along the right sideline after that, and he felt comfortable and started making good throws, and you just had that sense and feeling that it was really coming all together, including that touchdown pass to Rodgers in the end zone, and then uh, the beautiful play of Williams. He started getting some great blocking, getting to the edge, NC State giving up the corner, and Williams setting up his own touchdown run. A couple of long runs. Either scoring a touchdown or setting one up as we look at Kellen Mann in tonight's PlayStation Player Index. Over 200 yards of offense and a couple of touchdowns provided by the sophomore from San Antonio. Trowell back to return. Touchback, Q. We have got to be able to run the ball against their dime personnel. The words of Dave Doran, NC State head coach. And what you can look for in common terms is, you know, second and medium. When Texas A&M puts in their extra defensive backs, they're playing what's called two-man. That's too high safety with man underneath. They're, they're a little small in stature, and so look for NC State to run the ball during those downs. Defensively, Rod, uh, Coach echoes your sentiment. they got to set the edge, especially on the left side of that NC State defense. That's where the top, that long run by yeah. Williams that we just showed you took place. Right side of the O-line, left side of the D-line. On the run, it's the last beat to start off this half for NC State. Just a yard on the play. Well, they've had trouble setting the edge. There's no question about that for NC State. And, you know, the dime uh, defense that Q is talking about, you, you want to force those defensive backs and the extra defensive back to tackle. And that's, that's what NC State is thinking about and trying to make sure they get their rushing attack going. 65 yards only rushing in the first half.
Gillespie out of the backfield. Races for the first down. Tyrell Dotson shoved him out of bounds after a 12-yard pickup. Ryan Finley in his 39th and final start at North Carolina State. Remember, he started his career at Boise State. Had three starts back in 2015 there. Made five appearances in 2014, the year prior. Sixth year of eligibility, final night as a college football player. This is the nickel package Q was talking about. Yep, the five defensive backs, sometimes they'll use six. The last beat, good penetration by Mack for the stop. You know, the one thing that I am surprised about yep. is that Finley hasn't taken many shots deep down the field. And this is a Texas A&M defense that has struggled with the deep ball all season long. Remember they're without Donovan Wilson, their top safety and second leading tackler. And without Otaro Alaka tonight, their leading tackler from the linebacker spot. The last piece got a hole, a first down and more. Barreling inside the 35. What a beautiful block. Watch Dodson, 25, the linebacker, try to get inside. They turn him inside, opening up the hole, and that, that just gives you really something. Great job by Bradbury, the center in there. But Dodson gets caught up and turned inside. Chuck down to Amezi in space against Caper Smith. And it rallies to the ball. It's a loss of yardage. They'll lose three on the play. Caper Smith is senior out of New Orleans, playing in his 44th and final game. He was the Louisiana Player of the Year as a quarterback when he came out of high school. He threw for 5,500 yards and 70 total touchdowns as a senior. When he finished off his high school career, what a dynamic player he was. Turned into a great defensive back at AM. and Another hole. This time it's Person. And the true freshman. A solid run to the 25. This is a left-handed running team. Watch over here how you get two blocks and opening up a hole. Great job by the tackle and the guard. Tremendous effort by Jones and Prescott. One blocks out, one blocks in, and there's your hole. One of the best O-lines in college football. Consistently the last few years. Yeah, NC State's one of the best third down teams in the country. Sixth in the nation with that 50% rate. They're 0 for 6 tonight. Intercepted! Picked up by Tyrell Dotson! And the junior from Franklin, Tennessee with the house call! Dodson simply was dropped back and reading Finley's eyes. Read it perfectly. Couldn't have been easier for him. Finley never saw him, didn't anticipate him. Dodson was coming on a sprint towards the line of scrimmage. What a tremendous job. The coaching staff used two words to describe Tyrell Dodson. Defensive playmaker on full display on that 78-yard pick six. Tyrell Dodson with the pick six, uh, pick six extends the AM lead here in the third quarter. 15-point advantage. You'll see an SEC team in action. In fact, a couple of them tomorrow. Mississippi State and Iowa in the Outback Bowl at noon Eastern on ESPN2. And then the VRBO Citrus Bowl on ABC, Kentucky and Penn State. A couple of SEC Big Ten showdowns. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Who's going to have more fun tomorrow, you or me, catching ball games? Because I'll harass you. 
I, mean, I think t tomorrow is the day that everybody ought to just be like, you know what, if I'm not out of game, I got the remotes, I'm good. Well, if you're saying you're going to harass me via text message tomorrow, I'm going to assume you're going to have a better time than I will. I don't need to be harassed over the course of the day. <laughs> Speaking of harassment, this defense with a couple of picks on Finley tonight. Well, this is defensive coordinator Mike Elko outsmarting Finley, and this is a good, as good a play as you'll see. You see uh, Dotson threatening the blitz, faking it, and then retreating into coverage, and then he jumps the slant. And that is, that is film work, that is prep, that is anticipating what you can do with that. And then there's Dodson desperately <laughs> trying to hang on. You made it. Well, Mike Elko in his first year as the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M, but it's his third time facing Ryan Finley. Yeah. He was the DC at Wake Forest two years ago when they played NC State. That was a 33 to 16 Wolfpack win. Last year at Notre Dame, the Irish held Finley and the Wolfpack to 14 points in a 21 point Notre Dame victory. I don't want to get in a chess match with this quarterback. The words of Mike Elko. He's got an IQ of an NFL quarterback. He spent three years studying football of his six. He sees everything. We've got to be exotic in our disguise. I'll ask you Rod. What was that disguise quote unquote exotic. Yeah. I mean when you see a linebacker threatening the guard center gap you're expecting him to blitz you're not expecting him to get 10 to 15 yards deep and jump in pass coverage and let alone anticipate and jump the slant that's very exotic and well played by Dotson Finley off the fake finds Riley and Riley extends the play to the sideline to move the chains picks up nine well CJ Riley Entering action tonight in a much bigger role with Kelvin Harmon out. Riley steps up into that main X receiver role. And he's got nine targets already tonight. A touchdown as well. Great penetration by the front from Texas A&M. A little bit more juice in this unit. Led by Tyrell Dotson and Landis Durham up front. Remember early on we talked about Johnson and Dotson at the linebacking spot with the locker out. He had kind of struggled early on, and then midway, early into the second quarter, they sort of found the rhythm, started making plays, and then you get a big play with the pick six. I think they're pretty comfortable now. Yep. Finley hit from behind. That ball came out. Justin Matta BK put a hit on Finley. Recovered by the offense, third down. Looked like Josh fed Jackson, the right guard, rescued the ball for North Carolina State. That could have been disastrous. Yeah, well, this play is designed for the ball to come out faster. It's a short drop, quick pass game. Uh, Finley was holding on to it. You got to get rid of the ball. And he didn't. And boy, oof, took a big hit. Matabuke didn't waste any time getting on him. They still have yet to convert on a third down. Be careful of the middle of the field. They go sideline to Riley, and Renfro is there. Debian Renfro snipped it out immediately. Both of Finley's picks have come over the middle of the field. And even for a, a veteran quarterback, a guy who's been around the college game for six years, it reminds you how difficult it is to get a clear picture over the middle with all the linebackers and the safeties moving around. It's an easy place to make a mistake. Good pressure from AM that time. Good job by AJ Cole to get rid of it. There is a penalty marker from the near side of the field. Down at the 28. Bo Bodine. Uh, Brady Bodine, beg your pardon. Grad student playing his 45th and final game for NC State. During the kick, holding receiving team number 18. Ten yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. It'll be Texas A&M's ball, first and 10. Antonio Howard on the penalty. Back in Jacksonville when you return. <laughs> 2002 season. 
when they won 11 games a school record gunning for a 10th tonight but they trail Texas A&M by 15 there's this year's Gator Bowl the 74th edition of the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl here tonight for the Gator Bowl that always stands out in my mind 1978 Woody Hayes, Woody Hayes. and Charlie Bauman Charlie Bauman of Clemson had the interception to close out a 17-15 Tigers win. Ran into the Ohio State bench. Woody Hayes didn't take too kindly to that. Throw a forearm at him, and the rest is history. Never coached another game at OSU. Travion Williams putting his stamp on this game right now. A 38-yard run, his longest of the night. He has zone blocking to the right side, gives him the opportunity to use his vision and pick the hole he wants. Another tremendous block up front by his center, McCoy, and then he picks his lane, and man, I tell you, he, he's, he's some player with his balance, his vision, his toughness. Just outstanding. A yard shy of the century mark. Q Williams picks up that first down, uh, moves a change on the previous one, and then adds five more to it. The leading rusher in the SEC this campaign. Spent some time with him yesterday. What, what an uh, engaging, bright, uh, focused young man. I was really impressed with him uh, personality-wise. He talked about his strengths. Vision and balance, which kind of echoes what you guys have been talking about. Change of direction and change of speed. And then he was eager to point out his versatility, whether it's pistol, offset, in the slot, runner, catcher, blocker, do it all running back that NFL teams are going to have to take a hard look at. Yeah, he, he's, he's quite, quite the young man. And, and his background, his story, you know, his mother gave him up when he was born. She was quite young, gave him to the grandfather. Grandfather raised him until he passed away, gave him over to the aunt and uncle who raised him, and he calls them mom and dad, and now still has a great relationship with his birth mom. And the way they raised him, the young man he is, just incredible what family did pitching in to make him the person he is now. Williams, another run. Trying to drag defenders along with him. He took Jarius Moorhead down to the 17-yard line. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> and he's got balance. He has great balance. Running through a lot of traffic here. Great block by Sternberger there. Watch him run through some arm tackles and the strength and power to carry somebody. 127 yards. He is closing in on Darren Lewis's 1988 single season Texas A&M record. Finds the hole. Finds the end zone. Touchdown, Travion Williams. Oh, man. the things that you and Q talked about display right here now McCoy gives him a little bit of block outside but he doesn't need much also Sternberger he finds a little lane you see the acceleration the quickness but the vision too man could this be the final game of Williams Texas A&M career he has not declared whether he will go to the NFL or stick around for one more season. There's a lot of folks in College Station hoping that they get one more season with Travion, the junior from Houston. Aerial coverage from Jacksonville provided by Goodyear. From the end zone to the uprights, nothing comes between hard work and a goal. Goodyear, more driven. How can you know about Woody Hayes and the 1978 Hall of Fame game and not know about Weebles and Wobbles. <laughs> one of those things was more interesting to me. I'm going I'm to let you decide which one of those things was. Travion Williams had all five carries on that drive. An impressive performance on that series to extend the AM lead. Three more college football games tomorrow on New Year's Day right here on ESPN. It starts at 1 o'clock Eastern. LSU and UCF in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, followed by the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Washington taking on Ohio State and Urban Meyer's final game as the Ohio State head coach. And then closing out 
with the All-State Sugar Bowl from New Orleans, Texas. We'll square off with Georgia. All those games available on ESPN. As you get a look at our Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup standings with six more SEC teams in action during this bowl season. Good penetration by the nickelback Deshaun Capers-Smith. The bow challenge that we just looked at, did you notice the Pac-12 near the top? This is a big offseason, well, yeah. big postseason for the Pac-12 because they had a terrible bowl season last year. And again, it's interesting yeah. to note how conferences do. Three and two, Pac-12 right now with two more to play. So the ACC has five wins, the most of any conference, with a couple more games remaining. Finley under pressure, and the AM front is starting to step it up. Oh, that there is just a, a beat down on the left side. There's a penalty marker on the play as Tyree Johnson had the penetration. Like this end up being a face Personal mask. Personal foul, face mask, yep. defense number three. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. A true well, freshman out of Washington, D.C. flag. Well, I guess that's why he was getting the better of Witt on the right side. You see him pushing Witt 67 back in uh, towards Finley and had that hand on the face mask. Talented young player. Yeah. As you said, freshman, edge rusher, limited snaps this season, but very productive. He and Jaden Peavy, 92, the defensive tackle, two young future stars. And a freshman and sophomore up front here. Mack chasing Finley. Finley did just about everything he could to keep the play alive, but he ends up taking a sack. That's a rare sack these last couple of plays allowed by this NC State line. A loss of seven there. Finley's struggling a bit tonight. Do you think he has any regrets about not skipping no, this game? Come on. No, I, I will never denigrate a kid who works his butt off for six years and then has a rocky game. I'm not going to base my uh, ass assessment, yeah. I think, of Finley on yeah. this half, and I don't think well, scouts should either. I, th they won't. They won't. I, I certainly hope not because yeah, they won't. What this kid has done in the last three years, especially at NC State, I'd be insulted I, for him. I if agree. People, I, the scouts, scouts, is, yeah. scouts will not hold this game against him at all. Yeah, nor should they. I agree with you on that. But Finley running it to the 41-yard line. That ball came out at the end of the play, but the officials ruled Finley down. And remember. Finley decided early on he was going to play in this game because even though he transferred in, he got close to this senior class yep. and he wanted to finish with the senior class. Now, was he down before this ball comes out? You know what ends up happening, too, is the defender Renfro has his body underneath Finley. So maybe that almost prevents Finley from yeah. making contact with the ground and perhaps the ball does come out loose. These well, gigantic the screens. The this play is now under replay review. Yeah, they, these gigantic video screens here, Adam, they, they have Texas A&M's bench in a frenzy watching the replays up on the big screen. You know, I think, Q, here the question's going to be if maybe the shoulder was down. Let's even take a look at the knee here. That looks like the knee doesn't go down because Renfro gets his arm under it. Well, it's not about the knee here. No, on the, prior, about the, on the prior play. And now, now yeah. going forward, is that shoulder down yeah, as well? It's about the shoulder yeah. and the helmet. And he's still got control. Remember, on review, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. And in this case, that was down. You cannot look at this and say... It's indisputable to you? It's clear that he fumbled the ball. Yeah. That shoulder and the helmet hitting the ground tells you this call should either stand or be confirmed as it was on the field. You know, it's interesting. We were talking with our lead official, Mark Duddy, before the game, and... Sometimes replay, when it slows down frame by frame by frame, you're kind of convincing yourself, well, no, I think maybe this frame had the shoulder down or this frame didn't. This will be a very close one, I think. I'm with you. I don't think it's indisputable, but this is a judgment call for the replay crew. Well, we have research that confirms what you're saying about slowing, using slow motion frame by frame. You know, going all the way back to August, I was out in Charlotte for the ACC officials clinic, and they were telling their replay officials, don't slow the play down so much to the point where 
you're looking for things to overturn the call right. on the field. Officials want to have more trust in the calls. After review, the ruling on the field of the runner being down stands. It's third down for North Carolina State. And, and I think that's the, that's the, exactly, that's the right exactly call. Exactly to your point, officials, the replay officials, didn't feel it was indisputable video evidence to overturn. The process worked on that particular instance. Yeah, you're, you can't substitute your judgment for the call on the field. You have to look at the video, and it's got to be indisputable. You have to really have people completely agree. Yeah, there's no way, no doubt about it. Well, let's see if NC State can cash in on third down, something they have yet to do tonight. Finley throwing back across his body the catch made by Thomas but shy of the first down marker by about a yard and this might be an interesting decision for you Dave Doran I feel like you, you almost have to go to think about the momentum, it right yeah but watch Finley here he gets pushed out of the pocket now he has a clear picture to see what he wants to do and because Dodson came after him as the spy there was an opening and now now what do you do here you trust your rushing attack to get you two yards? I don't think so. The best fourth down team in the ACC this year will lean on Gillespie for the first down. And finally dragged down by Tucker. 5'11", 235 pounds. Got enough of a sliver on the right side to power his way through it. 63 on the ground for the senior tonight. Reggie Gillespie Jr. out of High Point, North Carolina. Call him the bus. He adopted Jerome Bettis' nickname. He wanted to be called the bus. I love that so much. There goes the big man. Ooh, oh. Contact there. Oh. Tucker came up to try to meet him. Held him to two yards. That's not an easy thing to do when the bus is coming right at you. I think the bus got slowed down a little bit there. This is a big hit. Went upstairs a little bit, too. Tucker, the sophomore out of Manville, Texas. And he's getting some dirty work done for the first down. Lost his helmet on the play, so he will have to come off the field for a play. Well, you're getting some better push up front on the left side. Prescott, 70. Watch him. Good double-team block, and then he drives his man completely out of the hole. Gillespie has an easy time getting in there from there. You mentioned Prescott, who had the great block. 25 of the offense, his helmet came off. He has to leave the game for one play. Prescott a little shaken up after that play. Graduated as a science, tech, and society major this month. Congratulations to Tyrone, one of several players on both of these teams that have picked up their degrees already. So now Joe Skullthorpe, the redshirt sophomore who rotates in at guard, may have to come in for Prescott. Three hundred and thirty four pound senior out of Decatur Georgia. There's Skullthorpe the sophomore coming in. Prescott is playing in his 49th game tonight. He's allowed two sacks his entire career. Is that, career. Is, is that good? It's not bad Bob. <laughs> I mean that's a number. No, it's that's, crazy. I mean it is. That is crazy it's good. Crazily infinitesimal. And you have that type of number on a couple of the guys yeah. on the offensive line over well, a this, long this period of time. This offensive line only gave up nine, nine sacks, sacks this season. Year. Part of the reason AM decided that trying to blitz Finley would be futile. So they haven't done much of that. Finley. Throwing up the sideline for Riley. Well defended on the perimeter by Leon O'Neal. 
the true freshman who's got that first career pick tonight. Well, you've got four downs here. You've already picked up a first down going for it on fourth, and you're down 22 points here. This is definitely, hey, we've got a few plays to, to use if you're doing it. This is not, you can't be thinking field goal at all. You need touchdowns, so you've got four downs to get something going. Nothing there. What a job by Justin Matabike to meet person in the hole. Has he had a series or not? I mean, he had the big hit on Finley, and then he just destroyed his would-be blocker and got into the backfield. As you see person limping off. Person's been limping off the field a couple of times tonight. Remember, he had an ankle injury early in the season. He had a leg injury against North Carolina in the second to last game. So it's been tenuous at times this year, the health of Person. That's a big zero looking at Finley right now. Play clock is winding down. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. Remember that this is the first game of. Ryan Finley's career at North Carolina State that he does not have Eli Drinkwitz calling the plays but now head coach at Appalachian State is already in Boone North Carolina so doesn't tonight have Kelvin Harmon doesn't have his top receiver so George McDonald and Des Kitchings are the co-OCs tonight the offense trying to get going for NC State Texas A&M trying to close strong as they prepare for the fourth quarter with a 22 point lead Say what you want, it means a lot to both of these squads tonight. Come on back for the fourth, we'll have some fun. Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick with you from Jacksonville. Interesting when we discussed the playoff structure with both Jimbo Fisher and Dave Doran, differing opinions. <laughs> SEC guy says, hey, I'm happy, status quo. I'd even be happy going back to the BCS, while Dave Doran said, I think I would like six. I thought yeah. that was an interesting discussion. There's no shortage of opinions by coaches. <laughs> Well, I think the opinion of Dave Doran right now is his offensive line is starting to wear down yeah. against this A&M front. Man, Finley got hit. Yeah, and he's got a fourth down decision. But take a look at, at this one. His offensive line is really starting to struggle now. And there's lots of pressure on a four-man rush with Kiki getting in there. But, you know, some, some coaches want an eight playoff format. There are a whole lot of issues with expanding doesn't mean they can't be solved but there are a lot of issues and no one in a position of authority to make a decision to make a change has said they're interested or willing to do that I think Jim Delaney as you told me during the break is the only let's call him a power broker great punt by Cole to pin him deep the only power broker so to speak that has said I'm wide open to it Greg Sankey on the other side of the SEC said you know, I think we're good where we are at. I understand why he would be okay with it because the SEC yeah. has been very good in this structure. Well, seven more years left on this deal. Doesn't mean that, you know, the two sides can't say we want to change, we want to amend. But let me just put this out there for you. What's good for the players? Yeah. Now, first and foremost, you say, what about health? If you if you expand this and now you have a 15 game, game season, sure. you're looking at an, a kind of an NFL season. We know from the FCS, yes, they have a playoff, but we know those teams are beaten up. And, and struggling at the end to get there. A lot of coaches have said that. A lot of FCS coaches yeah. say once we get to this time of year, we're just trying to get healthy. Well, and then if you're telling me that you're going to increase or double the money that comes in or whatever, sure. and the players are going to generate it, <laughs> right. are you going to set aside some money for players? Uh, are you going to create some inducement that makes it more palatable, more fair? There goes Trevion Williams. Gets the final block. 90 yards see ya with that incredible career long run Travion Williams is the all time single season Texas A&M rushing champion. Well, he gets a little help up front. They even get a good block on the safety 34 kid glass. And then you see the speed. If people had questions 
about him, it was, well, how fast is he? That might answer it right there. He has the balance, he has the power, he has the strength, has the hands to catch, he can do pass pro, and you saw the flat-out speed there. Is he coming back next year? Yeah, that'll be is the question. Is he coming back? But I'll tell you, that record that Darren Lewis had that stood for three decades comes tumbling down in Jacksonville with Travion Williams. 93 on that run. Congratulations, Travion. It's all you at the top of the A&M charts. The 93-yard career-long run puts Travion Williams over the top. The all-time Texas A&M single-season rushing leader. 236 yards tonight, four shy of tying his career high. And could that be the signature moment of the swan song for Travion Williams? We'll find out as the hours and days and weeks go by. He'll make his decision. He is something. He is really something. You don't think scouts were salivating on that acceleration? Well, let's go back to the touchdown and show you what he had there because he got a little help up front from his teammates. You'll see Sutherland 78 engage right there. Good block on Brock Miller. And so now you got a choice. There might be a hole to the right. There might be one to the left. And watch his vision as he gets in it and change direction. Sticks that right foot in the ground, comes back to his left, and now you get the pure speed, the acceleration. This young man is incredibly talented. Given a lot of love to that old line. 96 yards by Michael Simpsons, the Gator Bowl record. Virginia lost to Texas Tech in the 08 Gator Bowl, 31 to 28. Simpson, though, had that long run. Finley doing a nice job of maneuvering and finding Emezi for the catch. Gain of about five. I think if I were Dorn, I would uh, call Finley over and shake his hand, tell him thanks for everything you've done for NC State. Let's uh, have you watch the rest of the way and let's get, you know, some of the younger guys in there. Perhaps let, let McKay or, or Leary get in there and get some experience because, oof, he ain't going to catch us 42-13. I, I, I can't imagine that Dave Doran's going to have that leash much longer. I wonder if maybe Ryan Finley has said, no, I'm not coming out, coach. It wouldn't shock me either. Adam, that, that's what I have seen so far, and I'm on the Wolfpack sideline. Pre-game, yeah, they said be ready for Matthew McKay and Devin Leary, two talented freshmen, one a redshirt. But Finley sat by himself as Williams ran for the touchdown. No assistant coaches came over to him. There was no contact with the head coach. He put his helmet back on, stoic face, got together with his own line, and here he is for this possession. So it has not been uh, addressed on the sideline. You know, the big number that's going to stick out to a lot of people, maybe in the box score, is the one you're looking at. 0 for 10 on third down tonight for NC State. I mean, credit this Texas A&M defense. They've held Finley and the offense in check for the better part of the evening. And Mezzi stopped shy. Well, Good job on the perimeter by Charles Oliver. And Mike Elko's game plan has worked to perfection. He said, I don't want to blitz this guy. I, I don't think that will work. I mean, he will recognize it. He'll pick it up. It'll leave our corners in a, in a precarious position. It's too risky. Yeah. We're just going to try and make the picture cloudy or dirty for him and, you know, see if we can affect him that way. And we want to tackle well. And you know what? They've gotten two picks, and they've had hands in his face at times, and it's worked out well, worked out to perfection. Penalty flag before the kick. Ball start, offense number 19, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. Ryan Finley was named a finalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy, which recognizes the best football scholar athlete in the country. That award was taken home by the excellent in many facets Christian Wilkins, the defensive lineman for Clemson. But Ryan Finley has a lot to be proud of. Yeah, and we got no a doubt. chance to meet with him earlier this season. He's stoic, he's calm, he's steady. All the things that I think mentally and psychologically you'd want to have as a general manager in your quarterback. What a punt. <laughs> A.J. Cole says, hey, I know Brandon Mann's the Ray Guy winner, but I can do some good things too. Wow. <laughs> Ryan Finley, regardless of the outcome tonight, plenty to be proud of for a future NFL quarterback. 
City of the South. What Jacksonville is known as the site of the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. The Ash Verlander Champions Trophy awarded to the winner tonight. AM in control right now, 12 and a half minutes away from snapping a three game bowl losing streak. This is their 10th straight bowl appearance, a school record, but they haven't won a game in four years. We got to go back to the Liberty Bowl in 2014, the last time AM won a bowl game. Travion Williams, who has set the Gator Bowl rushing record with his 230 plus yards tonight. Passing up Floyd Little's record that was set in 1966 against Tennessee. That was a Syracuse running back. Williams has more than 20 yards from the old record tonight. Remember, this is a game that's been played continuously yeah. since 1946. Well, when you mention Floyd Little, you know. I mean, Syracuse, Denver Broncos. NFL yeah. Hall of Famer. Sling it out to Osmond Q buy-in that, that's the key word for Travion Williams during, during the coaching change I saw Kevin Sumlin out Jimbo Fisher in he told me yesterday he's looked at the running back position different under coach Fisher he, he's looked at it like a four-yard gain is a good thing in the past he was strictly home runs I want a home run how, how can I bust everything now he takes the four-yard gain and, and then which lends itself to you know to pop in the big ones and Coach Fisher's got a track record of producing NFL backs. His run at Florida State includes Dalvin Cook. Most recently, great diving catch by Courtney Davis. But it's going to be ruled incomplete. Back-to-back -back plays that were close to being catches, but both ruled incompletions. Officials in a very fast bang bang play ruled that he did not possess and control the ball all the way through the process of the catch, I guess. So it's another incompletion. Fourth down. <laughs> Braden Mann with a difficult punt. Good catch by Thayer Thomas. And he works his way back to midfield. When we finish up tonight, we've got Sports Center coming your way. Scott Van Pelt is standing by. Kirk Herbstreet and Jesse Palmer will preview the Rose Bowl game and the Sugar Bowl from on site Rockets Thunder and the Warriors all part of a log jam of a lot of teams involved in the playoff race in the West they're all in action and Ryan Clark the former Steeler is going to join SVP to talk about Antonio Brown not going to a couple of practices before their final game against Cincinnati to close out the regular season and a new quarterback is in for North Carolina State on this series Matthew McKay Redshirt freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina, is on for the sixth time this season. Thrown eight passes as a rushing touchdown. And that means Ryan Finley's night and North Carolina State career are done. There is McKay showing off the legs. It'll be third down coming up. Well, it's about time that they pulled Finley, and he's had a very, very big career. You think about his start at Boise State, what he did there, and getting hurt and losing his job, and then transferring here and being everything you could ask for as a quarterback here. Those 11,000 yards count what he did at Boise State as well in his NC State career. He will finish second in passing yards to Phillip Rivers. That is pretty good company to be a part of. Would you call Rivers the best player in the history of NC State football? Hmm. That's a good question. There's Gillespie on the move. Pottery, Torrey Holt, Phillip Rivers. Roman Gabriel, perhaps. I'm, uh, I, I put Philip Rivers slightly over Tory Holt. Okay. 
And I'm surprised you know about Roman Gabriel. You're way too young for that, my man. Way too young for that. I'll give an assist to our fine spotter, Bill Gary. Fourth down here for McKay. They've gone 0 for 12 on third down tonight, but 2 for 2 on fourth down. McKay will not get there. Great job by Ronnie Elam, the sophomore from Magnolia, Texas, making the stop. And that'll be a turnover on downs, giving it back to Texas A&M. Well, let's wrap up the career and really the overall academic experience of Ryan Finley. And this is why people talk about his acumen and his IQ as well. He's got three degrees. Well, he, he didn't waste any of the time he had in six years of college. He got his, his bachelor's at Boise State and then picked up one master's uh, at uh, NC State and then his graduate certificate. You know, he could have just at some point said, you know what, I'm going to really just focus on being an NFL player and not so much worry about things. But he was curious and interested and picked up more uh, degrees. Corbin on the move. 9.20 to play. Well, a fabulous career for Ryan Finley comes to a close tonight. Dave Doran has taken him out. Now I'll be kind of curious to see how much longer Kellen Mott will be in the game for Texas A&M and if some of the backups will get an opportunity here in bowl action for Jimbo Fisher. There goes Corbin. Adding on to the big night on the ground for Texas A&M. Oh, keep your eyes on the center, 64 McCoy. Watch him pull around and get a terrific block and then a kick out by Sternberger. I mean, you really can't draw it up any better than that. McCoy comes around, you know, seals things inside, and then Sternberger kicks out. They have a huge hole. Not too shabby. Eric McCoy is going to be an NFL center as well. He'll have a decision to make, but as a redshirt junior, he's already on Mel Kuyper's top 10 centers list. AM goes over 500 yards of offense for the night. Mon on the key. Yeah, I, I think I let uh, Mon rest a bit. You know, there is that new rule that went into effect this year with redshirting, which allows a, a player to play up to four games and keep his redshirt. So if you have freshmen, other guys who haven't played this year, you can get them out there and get some experience and not lose this year for them. Yep. So I, I would. I'd take out guys like Mon and play some of those other guys, get them a little experience and not lose the year. Now Starkle, the backup QB, doesn't fall into that category, but you're going to get that on the line. You're going to get that at the skill positions. You're going to get that on defense. And I would imagine Dave Doran will follow suit Gentlemen, as well. Gentlemen, remember when Jimbo talked to us yesterday and said, what have you accomplished in year one? Well, we learned how to compete. We learned how to win. The memory said about we learned how we haven't quite learned how to stomp on somebody when they're down and I think that th this teaching this team to finish I mean he loves to finish to exert your physicality on a team in the fourth quarter and continue to move the ball down the field I, I, I get a sense that that's that's what this is about they're all starters well Q they hang on every word he says he's a national championship winning coach not a lot of them out there working right now sliding grab there by Osmond when a national championship winning coach is your coach and he tells you this is how you win this is what you need to do you're not going to have players question it no so said, I mean, why would you said physicality how to compete how to finish how to stomp people out how to practice how to work how to watch film the foundation foundation of how and you know the other word was why Especially he used that with Kellen Mond. He's asked more about the why we do things rather than just the what we're doing and when we're doing. Seth Small, excellent freshman campaign, drills the field goal. 45 to 13, Texas A&M will start to put a bow on Dave Doran's season and on Jimbo Fisher's first year of a 10-year $75 million deal. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. From the end zone to the uprights, nothing comes between hard work and a goal. Goodyear, more driven. 
Texas A&M in full control tonight. 45 to 13 on top of North Carolina State in the first meeting all time between these two teams. You know, they'll finish the year in the top 20, nine wins, and undoubtedly the expectations for next season <laughs> will skyrocket a bit. So you got a national championship winning head coach at Alabama and Texas A&M. You got one at Clemson in the ACC. Now Mac Brown, North Carolina's new head coach, has a national title. And let's not forget Les Miles out of the Big 12 now. As and the new head coach of Kansas has a national title. And you have one national championship coach leaving in Urban Mind. That's right. I think both of these conferences are going to be very interesting to track to see who can challenge the, the cream of the crop, right? This is the same two conferences represented in our national championship game next week. How do you assess year one of the Jimbo Fisher era? Let's start there. We'll do the same for Dave Doran as well in his 60s. I think it's everything that Jimbo could have could have hoped for. He's building the foundation. He got nine wins. He, is, he has found himself a quarterback. Okay, on the run. By the way, let me not forget about our friend Butch Davis as well. Right. Uh, right. At FIU right. still. Right. Yeah, he, he has guys buying into his program, and, right. and they should. Again, when you have a national championship winning coach, and he says, this is how you practice, this is how you watch film, let's not worry about, you know, the number of wins, but you've got to do the little things. They're all buying in. They're all doing it. So I think this first year, he would tell you, has worked out great, but that it's only the first year. It's the foundation, and do they take the next step after that? Yeah, can they challenge Alabama? Obviously, that's the question for everybody in the SEC, but can they challenge Alabama in the West? Run by McKay. Ooh, tough hit by Buddy Johnson. His first start tonight. You know, this is part of the excitement around College Station right now. Is the fact that signing day, the early signing period, just got done with, and this is where the ranking is, according to Tom Luganbill and Craig Harbert and our great yeah. crew at ESPN's recruiting section, third behind Alabama and Georgia in terms of recruiting classes. So we asked Jimbo yesterday, how many teams? legitimately have a chance to win a national championship when you start the season. He said eight to ten. Sure. And, and that's about right. We kind of all have come up with that number, talked about it. And it starts with teams that have the commitment, are willing to put the money into it, and have the talent and the depth. And Texas A&M has all of those things. They have plenty of money they're willing to Time spend out. on football. North Carolina State, their first of the Those half. recruiting classes this increase their depth. Now. Can they compete with Alabama? Well, they're not going to knock them off next year, I don't think. But there is the possibility that they have the ability to do it. Travion Williams has a decision to make whether he wants to go to the NFL or stick around for his senior year. But if this was the last time he carried the football for Texas A&M, what a way to close it out. He is a fantastic player. Has had a tremendous career. A great, great season. It's it's disappointing he didn't get recognized earlier and get more attention as the season unfolded. He should have, but he is now our Capital One player of the game. With a Gator Bowl record, 236 rushing yards. There's McKay on the run, hit by Jaden Peavy. And we kind of put a bow on Texas A&M season on Williams' fantastic year. Sliding the focus over to Dave Doran. Year number six, first time in over two decades that they've gone to a bowl game five straight years. This guy was on the outskirts two years ago. Yeah. A year and a half later, he almost takes the Tennessee job, sticks around, and he brought this team to a nine-win season. A step away from double-digit wins is not a small feat at North Carolina State. No, no. They have to be happy with what, what's been done here lately. And maybe this guy will be at the helm come next season. Matthew McKay, the 210-pound redshirt freshman. Well, look, they're trying to catch Clemson. Yep. That's the standard yes. for everyone in the ACC. And you have to keep in mind he's lost a few coaches, you know, this offseason. He is losing what likely will be two first-round picks uh, in players. And so others will have to step up. Does he have the depth? But getting the quarterback position solved is the, is the first thing uh, in order for him. Yep. 
Well, fans, you can check out the ESPN app for the postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following this game. We'll award the MVP of the Tax Layer Gator Bowl as well. Kellen Mond's night is done, and Nick Starkle is into the game for Texas A&M, the redshirt sophomore from Argyle, Texas. And Kwame Etwi will get the carry. Five foot nine senior. Solid work by Kellen Mon. Exploded out of the gate with that 62 yard rushing touchdown in the opening series. I'm telling you, he grew by leaps and bounds over last season. Yep. If he makes the same kind of jump to his junior season, Oof, watch out. Look out. Yep. Look out. I thought he grew in this game, sure. Rod. Yeah. Because he hit that funky spot late first quarter, early second quarter, and he was all over the map. And then next thing you know, he completed that ball down the right sideline. There goes Cullen Gillespie. Q, we'll talk about him in a moment. But Q, remember one of the things that Jimbo said about dealing with Mon, about the mental aspect of the game for a quarterback, dealing with adversity and overcoming that. Uh, they address the physical, you guys mentioned it, the footwork, the hand placement, uh, the whys of the offense, why do we run this play against this coverage, and then the psychological. And I, I got to tell you one thing. He acted like a winner every step of the day today, even when he with his accuracy wasn't there. The command, the poise, the, the not showing any weakness to his teammates. So he is a different guy in, in year two now as a sophomore. Wrapping up his sophomore campaign, as you mentioned, Q. Wanted to tell you about Colin Gillespie, the senior out of Katy, Texas. Texas A&M folks made sure to let us know about his story. 41st career game. Began his career as a linebacker, switched to fullback before this year. He's the 12th man for Texas A&M. He got his carry, and that's why you heard that crowd reaction here in Jacksonville. He's the best. I spent a day with him last year when yeah. we were in College Station. Nobody does more community service. No one's more beloved by the fan base. No one's given it back as much as Cohen. Absolutely. There goes Kwame Etwe. He's got a first down for Texas A&M. Inside what, of two to play. What right? a moment for him. As you mentioned, a senior, a chance to finish off his career by possibly getting in the end zone yep. here. That would be huge for him and his friends and his family. Gillespie coming back into the game. There's Cullen. Too many men on the field here. A late substitution for Texas A&M. Illegal substitution. Offense, 12 players in formation. Five-yard penalty remains first down. A fitting penalty for yeah. Texas A&M, I would say. <laughs> well, you listen, you, at this point of a game, what coaches are trying to balance, you, you don't want to run, run up the score, but right? you, you want to get guys you gotta in. you got to reward your yeah, guys. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? In my estimation, if I'm a coach, my loyalty is to my guy. Yeah. And I hope the opposite coach understand that. Yeah. And I'd like to think these two gentlemen understand that. And Dave Dorn and Jimbo Fisher. There goes Gillespie. Huh? Adam Dorn understands it 100%. He put Garrett Bradbury, their center, that's in right. that fullback yeah. against the ECU that's right. for the last touchdown of the, uh, of the game. So that, that, that's what's going on here as yep. well. Absolutely. Well, as we wrap things up here in Jacksonville, a shout out to our tremendous crew from top to bottom, led by our producer, Mandy Cohen, our fine director, Anthony DeMarco, the wonderful women and men who make up the truck, the camera crew up here in our booth, our spotter, Bill Garrity, our fine statistician, Ed Svita. Gillespie leaning towards the end zone. You could not script it better. In his final game, Cohen Gillespie caps it all off. The 12th man punches it home. And the 12th man nation at AM ought to be going nuts because this run tells you everything you need to know about the 12th man fighting, overcoming, never giving up. He walked on, earned a scholarship. He represents the 12th man. 
Jimbo got his bath. <laughs> There's a lot going on got on that. A play. Lot there. Wow. <laughs> Good for Cullen Gillespie. The 12th man is the walk-on who is voted upon to be the 12th man by his teammate. It's an honor that goes back about 80 years in Texas A&M football history, even going back into the 70s and 80s in the Jackie Sherrill days. It's an honor that, in fact, Colin Gillespie has said means more to him than a scholarship would yeah. have. Uh -huh. That should tell you a whole lot if you're unfamiliar with some of the A&M history. That should tell you everything you need to know about Colin Gillespie, what he means to Texas A&M, and what A&M means to him. How cool is that? That's that's you cannot write that any better for that young man, and I hope that young man enjoys that moment for the rest of his life. Uh, I think he's huffing and puffing, man. He's like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Am I on a special team? I can't get out there now. <laughs> First career touchdown. Awesome. That's what college athletics should be about. There's the moment to cap it all up. Four hundred and one rushing yards for AM, including that explosive run to start the night for Kellen Mond. Five rushing touchdowns this evening as well. It may have taken that Texas AM offensive line a little bit of time to get it in gear after the uh, I don't know, tongue lashing from sure, Jimbo, Jimbo Fisher, on the sideline. Yeah. From but that the, point on, <laughs> they, they, they moved the ball. They yep. moved that defensive line from NC State. Uh, by the way, this is lined at the 20 because of the excessive celebration penalty that you may or may not have witnessed <laughs> after the Gillespie touchdown. I'm sure AM will will not be too upset about that. Two teams that are going to end their years with nine wins. First time for Texas AM since Johnny Manziel's final season at Texas A&M at quarterback. NC State with a nine win campaign, something that hasn't been touched very often in their program's history. Only once have they won 10 games. Phenomenal job for these two head coaches. A strong performance by Texas A&M to wrap up this season. Well, partner, thank you for 2018. It's been a lot of fun. Pleasure, my man. Awesome stuff. Same to you, Quint Kastnick down on the field. We mentioned uh, our fine crew can't go Leaving tonight without mentioning Angie Carino, our fine booth coordinator as well, who does so much beyond what you see. Suffice it to say, we'd be lost without her. I'm barely functioning with her. I don't even know what would happen if she weren't here. <laughs> Demonte Rem gets the carry. And that'll take us the triple zeros. Jimbo Fisher closes out his opening season at Texas A&M with a bowl win and a nine win campaign. For Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick, Adam Amin, saying so long from Jacksonville, Florida. We are exactly an hour away from the new year and SVP will take you right up to midnight on the East Coast. Good night, everyone.